Maybe, maybe not. I'm teasing. Um, I'm not a big fan. I've got really good friends who drink a ton of Red Bull and they really like it. It's typically uh, mixed with a, a vodka chaser at the bar and I'm <laughs> doing that. But what I want you to know is that they're different from, from sports drinks. All right. First and foremost, check this one out. Have you guys seen this fixed stuff? Regular cup of coffee has about 50, 60 milligrams of caffeine. A bottle of that has 300 milligrams of caffeine. Okay, so talk about being jazzed and having energy. Holy smokes, okay? <laughs> Most of these down here, if you guys choose to have one of these, I'm not anti-energy drinks. I just don't think they're the greatest thing. Okay, and I'll explain why. Most of those have about 80 milligrams of caffeine. And I happen to like caffeine. I drink Diet Coke and I have a coffee periodically. Right? But what they do is they have other stimulants in them. They have something called guarana, they have something called um, green tea extract, they have something called glucomine lactone, something called taurine, all these different sciencey things which can actually work as stimulants, which make your central nervous system jazzed. And they make you have neuronal excitability, which means, hey man, I'm on top of it for, oh, maybe half an hour, and then I take this nose dive and I feel like crap, okay? So what you have to know is that that's why they're advertised as energy drinks. And there was a question that was brought up yesterday with the coaches that said, what about these four-hour, five-hour energy things that you see on, those, on TV? You seen that? No, no calories, but all the energy you need for four or five hours. Well, if it doesn't have calories, and we've determined that calories are what our body runs on, what do you think is in it? Okay? And if it says, but no caffeine, well, there's a lot of derivatives that are out there, like different herbs and stuff that actually aren't caffeine, but have a similar scientific or chemical makeup to caffeine and work the same way in your system as caffeine. Keep in mind, some of that stuff is actually outlawed, if you will, or out, they, they don't want you to have it in the NCAA. Okay, so you have to be real careful about what it is you have as well. There's safety concerns for athletes because, you know, you do any of these things and you have a couple of Red Bulls before you go and play, People die from this kind of stuff, not because of Red Bull, but because they've increased their heart rate, they're not in the shape they should be at, it's super hot out, and they've had a ton of stimulants, okay? It's few and far between, but you can hurt yourself, and or you can become injured, all right? This is what you really need to do is for the injury prevention and for your performance, is nutrition, hydration, and lifestyle, okay? Lifestyle also meaning get enough sleep. All right. I am no sleep expert, but I can tell you, doesn't your performance just go in the, in the crapper when you don't get enough sleep? I mean, performance in the classroom or on the field, it doesn't matter. Go to bed at a reasonable hour and get up at a reasonable hour. And I'm not your mother. I'm at the college. I know you guys. I was in bed at 2, two o'clock in the morning. I pulled all nighters too. But you suck as an athlete if you do that, okay? So be smart about it. The other thing is that studies will show that if you don't get enough sleep, it will completely tank on you. Okay, I'll get off my high horse about enough sleep at this point. But what do you guys need to do before you exercise, while you're exercising, after you're done exercising, fuel-wise? Okay? Well, the goals are you want to provide energy to working muscles, obviously. Okay? We want to make sure that your blood sugar is up and stable, not up and down and doing this kind of thing, and that your glycogen stores, the storage form of carbohydrate, are up and full and ready to roll. Okay? Give you a psychological edge, well, we're hoping, because if you ate something and the other team didn't, hopefully you'll feel pretty good. Um, hydration and be individualized. And like I said in that second slide, is it's got to be individualized. What, what, what's going to work for one guy isn't going to work for another, or one woman isn't going to work for another. What you need to think about is that the closer it gets to competition, the more a food or fuel should be liquid. All right, the farther away it is from competition or from exercise or from practice, i.e. three or four hours, having a solid meal is fine. That stuff's going to be out of your stomach. You may feel like it's still there, but it's out, emptying out of your stomach. First thing to leave your stomach, carbohydrates. The second thing, protein. The third thing, fat. So if you have a relatively high fat meal, it's going to be the last thing out of your stomach. That's why when we go out to Chinese food, about an hour and a half later, we're craving Dairy Queen because it was just a bunch of carbohydrates. Tasted really good, filled you up, but dang, now I'm hungry again. Go to McDonald's, you get the Big Mac and the Big Fry, you don't need to eat for about six hours, right? So that's kind of the way that the stomach operates. Ideally, if you're going to practice at, what, 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock, when do you guys usually practice? Or after class, I mean, obviously, or it depends. You got to have breakfast every day, okay? Now, again, I sound like your mom, but I can't tell you how many pro players don't eat breakfast. They get paid millions of dollars, and they could improve their performance if they just would get up at a reasonable hour and have some. 
It doesn't have to be a grand slam. It can be a piece of pizza from the leftover from the night before. Ideally, it should be a carbohydrate source. So a perfect breakfast might be a bowl of cereal and milk, a glass of juice, or a half a banana and a bagel with peanut butter, something. Okay, it's something that you get in your system. The other thing it does is it tells your body it's okay to start burning calories. Because if you go to bed at midnight and the last time you ate was 9 o'clock with a snack with your roommate or whatever, you get up at 7 and you don't eat until 11. You went from 9 o'clock that night until 11 the next day and your body says, you got to tell me, can I burn calories or can't I? And the only way I know that I can burn them is if you put food in me. Because if you don't give me food, I'm going to hold on to all my calories. So what happens to your metabolism? It goes way low. So as an athlete, make sure that you have breakfast every day. Okay? Doesn't have to be the grand slam, like I said. All right. Um, one thing that I'd like to make sure that you do is that about an hour before competition, you guys, or an hour before you practice, is get a small carbohydrate snack. Um, you know, for me, sometimes it's just a handful of peanut M&Ms and, &Ms and uh, um, like a, a half a glass of light juice or something like that before I go. I play hockey a lot, so that's kind of the new thing for me is, is having something like that. And peanut M&Ms are not just carbohydrate, I know, but they kind of make me feel good when I'm out there. Um, so about an hour beforehand, having a sports drink, having a granola bar that might be in the locker room, having a half a banana, and you know, maybe a big glass of water, something. You top off those glycogen stores. When you start exercising, you're going to be that much ahead of the competition. That much ahead. And that's not just me telling you that. That's study after study that will tell you that. Okay, for the recovery piece, this is really important for you guys because you want to bounce back to date from your baseball game, your softball game, your soccer match, your basketball game, whatever it might be, for tomorrow's practice, for the next day's practice, and for the next day's game. What you do today affects tomorrow. So what you want to do is make sure that you're filling up your glycogen stores again. All right? You are replacing your fluid and your electrolytes, and you're re repairing your muscles, and allowing them to recover so that they can turn around and be broken down and torn to shreds the next day so that you can recover fully the next day. So there's this, there's this window. You guys train every day for the most 